Hello everyone, I've got a little bit of a special video for me here and hopefully something that anyone watching this will be quite interested in. I mentioned in the past few videos about being getting back into my retro gaming and I wanted to start showing off some of the retro stuff. And I've just bought something which to me is absolutely fantastic because this is a system that I had as a child. I did not grow up with the Mega Drive or SNES, I had friends with them. Um, so I got to play Sonic, Sonic 2 and all that around friends' houses. But this is the machine that I grew up with. This isn't the exact machine, obviously, and it's not even the same model. But this was a Commodore Amiga. Now this is the A600. I had an A500 Plus growing up. So what is the Amiga? For those who don't really know, it was a machine, a series of personal computers released by Commodore from 1985 onwards. Started with the A1000, which was sort of like more of a personal computer system. You kind of had like the A500, which was more of a low end system. The A500 Plus, which as I mentioned, I owned. You had this A600. Now, I'd never heard of this system until the other week. When I was chatting with someone via Twitter, I mentioned that I wanted to buy an Amiga again. And he recommended this A600. Now, the difference with the A600 compared to the A500, the A500 Plus, and the A1200. As you can see, it's like a standard keyboard. You've got all your system parts in here. You actually also have a floppy disk drive, but that's not a floppy disk drive. That's a USB port, which I will go into in a bit. The A600 launched without a number pad, which the Amiga, get, the Amiga had a lot of uh, flight sims on it, um, so uh, rendered them useless. The A600 was a bit of a misstep in Commodore's history. One of many missteps in Commodore's history, and there are probably many people on YouTube who can go into that better than I can. I'm still kind of researching a lot of this stuff. So, anyway, this particular machine came out in 1992. It was the uh, it was succeeded by the A1200. The A1200 had what we call a different chipset in there, it had the AGA chipset. This uses the ECS chipset, I believe. So, the 1200 was capable of a little bit more, but you have some issues with backwards compatibility with some of the older games now. I'm getting this purely to play the games on, not for much else besides. So, like I say, we'll go into the Amiga itself and the little hardware and stuff. So, you can see we've got several parts on the back there. We've got your TV output part. We've got, actually, I'll flip that round. We can actually see it a little bit better. So, we've got a lot of parts here that, you know, don't exist anymore in a number of ways. We've also got a case where it feels like it's going to open quite a bit. Going to need to get these screws in a bit more. So we've got a port for a disk drive, the serial part, we've got a parallel part, your audio cables, a video out, TV port, we've got the RF modulator there, and we've got where the power brick goes. Now on this side, we've got your parts there for mouse and other peripherals. And we've got the aforementioned floppy disk drive, or at least where the floppy disk drive used to live. This particular Amiga has been fitted with a, what they call a Gotek drive, which is a floppy disk emulator. So you put a USB stick in there, put your ROM files on the, on the root, dri root directory, and I can select them via this little panel here. So I'll look at some of the other things that the Amiga has. So this came with, oh, I should also, also mention that this has had, got the expanded RAM in there as well, bringing it up to a mighty 6 megabytes of RAM in total. So the Amiga, of course we have a standard mouse with a ball, <laughs> which I haven't seen one of these in absolute years. We've got a quick shot joystick with very, very click action there. And we'll just move the Amiga out of the way as well so that I can get the power brick. So obviously we had, we've got modern consoles, modern consoles come with power bricks. The uh, Xbox 360 have had a rather large power brick. Didn't quite have that though, did it? So plug this into your Amiga, flip the switch, and the Amiga will boot on. So, like mentioned, this was a big thing in my childhood. I absolutely loved the Amiga growing up. Um, I wish my parents had never gotten rid of it, but, you know, these things happen. So, the Amiga, I had games like uh, Super Frog, Azul, 
Pinball Dreams, Pinball Fantasies, Lemmings, and so many mobs besides that. Hopefully I'll be able to show one or two of them off in this video. Now, aside from being a game machine, the Amiga was also used as a media machine for many people. Um, in fact, um, the Amiga was home to a piece of software called Video Toaster, and also where Lightwave got its start, which was used in the first three seasons of Babylon 5, and also a series called Sequest DSV, which, heard of, never watched. Never watched Babylon 5 either. But there we go. So it was more than just a games machine. It was at the time said to be one of the better personal home computers. It actually did, the Amiga systems did sell very, very well. But Commodore were a problematic company. They kept making mistake after mistake after mistake. Again, many of you YouTubers probably go into more detail on this. Um, so Commodore did actually go bust by the mid 90s, sort of after the launch of the Amiga CD32. Of course, the Amiga CD32 was launched to compete with things like the N64 and PlayStation, or at least just before those came into prominence, and it had absolutely no chance. So, let's boot this thing up. Okay, so we've got the Amiga plugged in. We've got the cables going to the television. We've got the cable going to the power pack, which is off camera. We've got the mouse, and we've got the joystick there. So let's boot the Amiga itself on. So, what happens now is, you can see, something's came on on the television, the Amiga is the Amiga's powered. We've got the screen for the Flash 40 for the GoTech drive there. And it's just telling us that it's on Flash 40 version 2.13, obviously. We haven't plugged anything into the Amiga, so it's not going to run anything. But when we look at the Amiga screen itself, we see this screen here. Very, very familiar to me as a child. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert the go to the USB stick in there, and what will happen is it'll come up with the appropriate game. So you can see there we've got the file names of all of the ADFs that I've put on the root directory. So we've got Alien Breed, Apigia, Cannon Fodder, Cannon Fodder 2, Chaos Engine 2, Original Chaos Engine Chuck Rock, and here's the one we are after. So I'll leave it, hover on that for a bit, and then we can see that the game itself is booting. So I'm just gonna boot the game because there's a lot of flashing here that I don't want people to really see. So this, the source of this um, particular ADF is, um, it's been got a crack tray on there and it's also got a trainer on there. So I'm just gonna disable everything on the trainer, but then we're gonna load up the game itself. So I can actually point towards the screen now. So we'll get this message straight away, it tells us we've got the RAM there, which tells us that the game's publisher is Psygnosis. Very, very popular early 90s, well, 90s publisher, would go on to become Sony Liverpool, and they're unfortunately being shuttered now, or folded into Sony Entertainment itself. Cover there, the artwork there was designed by Roger Dean of the Yes Artwork firm. DMA Design, a name likely to be familiar to all of you, would go on to be rebranded Rockstar North. I'm sure you all know what they've made. But the Amiga was kind of where DMA design made its start as such. And this particular game was, I would say, the one that kind of put them into prominence. This is a game that was so big, it kind of got ported to every system out there. I'm sure most of you will have played this game at some point. But here's the intro. So of course it's Lemmings. So Lemmings, one of the first games I remember playing. There are a lot of games that I do kind of say are my first game ever played. This wasn't one of the first ones I ever played. I would say the first games I really do remember playing were Pinball Dreams and possibly Lotus Esprit Turbo Challenge 3. So we're just going to move on to disc 2. Again we use the switch at the bottom. If we click the mouse in to tell us to say that we've changed disc. So we'll let the Amiga do its thing. So. Like I was saying just before the intro started, Lemmings was pretty big. Um, 
spawned numerous sequels, was ported to every system, um, it, you know, Mega Drive, Super Nintendo, I believe it was on the Master System, it was had a PC port, had an Atari port, had whatever port you could think of at the time. There was even a 3D one, and unfortunately no one's really done anything with the franchise since. There's been a mobile game, but I believe the rights to Lemmings live with Sony, so please, can we have a new Lemmings or something? Please? Really, would really, really like that. So for those who don't know, Lemmings is a pretty simple premise. You guide Lemmings to an exit. They come out with a trapdoor, and they have a number of abilities that you can assign to them. The abilities are finite, and they range from climbing, you have this sort of like guide you down, uh, float down, stopper, huge link to this explodey boy. This one lays down tiles to create like a ramp. This one bashes through objects. This one has a pickaxe. This one just straight up digs down. So we're going to assign it to that one. And I'll just show you the first level of this, then I'll end the video. But I really just kind of wanted to show off the Amiga, because I'm incredibly excited to have one again. It's not exactly the model that I had, and obviously it's been modified beyond factory spec, but you kind of have to deal with that with this sort of machine. And I'm really thankful for the Gore-Tec drive, because I imagine sourcing the games for this is incredibly difficult, and floppy disks are degrading you know they they're probably hard to keep track of nowadays so having a solution like this is absolutely perfect so there we go level complete saved everyone we get we needed 10 percent rescued 100 percent let's get every lemming on the level and that's our password i used to have a little book full of passwords for lemmings um as a kid I used to, uh, in fact the book was full of passwords and cheats for a ton of amiga games everything from batman to super frog to lemmings to solve the passwords for Lotus 2 etc etc so on that note thank you all very much for watching this i hope you enjoyed the video and i hope you enjoy seeing a little glimpse of this machine that to me is absolutely wonderful i'll be getting a lot of usage out of this and yeah please feel free to subscribe please feel free to leave a comment down below i'd be very interested to hear from anyone else who had an amiga as a kid or had an amiga you know when they were younger who maybe still has one i'd like to hear about your retro game experiences what you grew up with what you like to play until next time thank you very much